Hello friends, it's Tori here again with Fox and Hazel and I am here, this is actually part of a blog hop I'm doing with the rest of the design members from Robin Marie Smith's design team and today I'm just showing you guys um, a really fun envelope art tutorial. Um, this is actually a really easy way to like dress up art, or sorry, dress up an envelope if you're mailing it to someone. And so I'm just working with a really big craft paper envelope, um, I believe it's like six by nine inches give or take. Um, I can't remember where I got these. These are actually left over from my sister-in-law's wedding <laughs> that we sent her wedding invitations out to and we had like a ton left over and so I have them all stockpiled at my house and so um, I use them for all kinds of art projects and journals and stuff. And so I just put down some white uh, titanium, or titi sorry, titanium white paint and I'm just going over it with clear gesso. And now you don't have to do this. Um, the reason I put the clear gesso is because originally I thought I was gonna use watercolors and so um, watercolors on craft paper is like a nightmare. And so the clear gesso like makes it a sealed surface that you can use water-based paints or like watery paints on a lot easier. It doesn't immediately soak into the um, paper underneath. I ended up using inks instead, <laughs> like acrylic ink. So you could skip the clear gesso step if you wanted to. I'm not like a huge fan of clear gesso either. Like I have the Liquitex stuff and I find it to be really gritty, which some people really love. And I struggle with the texture of it. I know there's other brands that are smoother. So if you have a brand that you love, um, that I could probably get in Canada because I can't get pra, Prima marketing stuff. I know lots of people like that brand, but it's hard to get here. So anyways, share with me your clear gesso recommendations. And so now what I'm doing is um, I'm just digging out a whole bunch of like acrylic inks on stuff. That's actually a watercolor ink. Um, but I have a shoe box next to me that you can't see that I keep all my little ink bottles in. And so the first color I'm going to use is this is a golden high flow acrylic. Um, it's meant for like airbrushing essentially. Um, and it's in this turquoise thalo shade, which I love, I'm obsessed with. And I'm just using it on my butcher's tray palette up there. If you don't have one of these, seriously get one. They're like, I don't know, 10 bucks, 12 bucks or something like that off Amazon. And it's awesome. It's like an enameled metal tray and you can get them in different sizes and I really like using mine if I'm mixing colors or just use as a palette. I don't really prefer palettes um, that have wells in them unless I'm using like watercolors because I don't want them to touch but like for acrylics I really like one big giant flat palette to use. And so this is a watercolor ink by I think it's I'm probably going to pronounce it wrong it's Brea Rose I'm assuming. Um, I got these actually when I took a trip down to the states in April and I got two shades because I've seen them all over Instagram, but you can't get them in Canada. And so I bought myself some, and this is this, I'm not sure what shade that was, it was a pink, a pink shade. <laughs> and so now I'm just playing with it. I'm watering both those down, as you can see, and really playing with them like they're watercolors. I wanted to get that watery effect um, because I plan on using the stickers from Robin Marie Smith's um, like Art Pop stickers, uh, the Laguna Dreaming. I believe and it's very it's watercolors is what she's done with her mixed media or inks that look very watercolor like and so I'm trying to create a background to match the stickers that I plan on using and so this is um, a Hansa Hansa yellow light I believe I can't remember what brand it is I'll link to one in the comments below <laughs> Um, in the description below and so this like I said I'm just trying to match the colors you can't see it I'll show it in a minute maybe I should have showed it first but the stickers I'm using have kind of this uh, color palette happening and you can see that I'm not putting too much in the center oh this is another ink I'm using it's quinacridone magenta by Liquitex um, I'm not putting too much detail in the center, like where your address would go on an envelope, only because that's where I plan on putting the stickers. So like I'm putting some, but I'm trying to kind of more, get some more around the outside edges, mostly because I don't see the point in painting there and then putting a sticker over top, right? So um, I think I'm struggling with the lid on my acrylic ink right now. And that's where I've gone off to <laughs> this green. I can't remember what color it is now. It's like a lime green maybe it's called lime green it's very green anyways so I'm just dropping it all over and again just sort of like playing with it the colors are kind of mixing they're kind of you know bleeding into each other you know just making it kind of messy which is my specialty around here <laughs> making messy 
art. <laughs> and so I think now I'm just going to dry it with my heat gun. I, I skipped that part for you guys. It wasn't very interesting. Just because I was in a, not in a hurry. I just hate waiting for paint to dry, as you all know. And so now these are these um, art pop stickers. And again, these are the Laguna Dreaming ones. So I picked out three that were, like I said, I was sort of trying to emulate what was going on in those stickers in the background here to try and get them to match. And now I'm just sticking them down across. So three across this large envelope here. I was actually really pleased that I did these and then as I stuck the stickers on, I was like, hey, I did a pretty good job matching the paint to the stickers. <coughs> Excuse me if you heard my cough. And so I'm just lining them up um, like across, like three by three. And I realized as I stuck them down that I kind of had set myself up to fail because I had used that clear gesso, which is fine, but um, because the gesso I have is kind of gritty, these stickers didn't really want to stick to it very well. Like they're very sticky. As I don't know if you saw that. I kind of lifted up my backdrop <laughs> when I stuck it down and pulled it up. But um, I didn't realize that the gesso, the clear gesso, because it's so gritty, kind of made it like a really rough, uneven surface that made it hard for the stickers to adhere to. So now I'm going back with just with some thicker matte medium and just gonna put some underneath the stickers and also on top and everything to seal them so that they don't like see how easy that peeled up that should have really been stuck on there without peeling up that easily and so yeah i'm just gonna paste these things down and make sure they stay nice and secure something worse than making like a mixed media piece and then having one of the collage elements like fly off you're like i swear that was stuck down there it's like washi tape Man, washi tape, I have so much of it and I never use it because I hate how it doesn't stick very well. And I know you can like add glue and runner, like glue runner tape and all that stuff, which I do if I use it, but I think I get so frustrated with its lack of stickiness or that it just like curls up after like 20 minutes that I sort of end up avoiding it altogether. So there's some brands that are really good, uh, but I find the really cheap Japanese ones that you get online to be really subpar in terms of their stickiness so so i've got those on there um i'm just i just rubbed them down with my fingers and uh i'm gonna i disappeared i'm just gonna get my heat gun and just uh dry this really quick because i'm impatient and if you guys are looking for a heat gun honestly i bought this one off amazon for like well i'm in canada so it was probably like uh, actually, it was way more expensive than I wanted it to be. I think it was like almost $30. But I know that if you get it on Amazon.com, if you're American, you can get it for like 12 bucks. Canada's prices are kind of ridiculous. So, but it seriously works so good. It works better than any of the embossing ones that I've got from the craft stores. It doesn't overheat. It doesn't shut off. Like, it's bomb. I'll link to it in the description. But if you're looking for a heat gun, I really recommend this like kind of ugly black and red one. I think they sell it in blue and white too. But all I could get up here was uh, the black and red. So, so here it is. Maybe I'll get really creative one day and paint it or something. I don't know. So anyways, I'm just sealing this tape again um, with more matte medium. This one actually stuck really good because all of the circle stickers were covered with um, the matte medium that it went down really fine. And this is another um, sticker tape set from, or tape sticker set, I guess, from the Laguna Dreaming um, series. These are just like long, they're supposed to look like long pieces of washi tape essentially. And so I've just stuck it down across and now I'm going back in with a fine brush and I'm using that um, high flow acrylic in the turquoise to kind of make my, these are like, I put these on everything, these like doodly scribbly branch flower things. So I'm just filling in a corner with that. Again, I'm trying to avoid the center of it because that's where the address will go since it is supposed to be an envelope that's supposed to go somewhere. And I know some people wonder if these like these type of art, you know, envelope art things will get delivered. And as long as your address is legible and like clear, I've never had a problem with any of the things not being delivered. I find that people who run into those problems is because they've done, like they've made it really hard to read the address. But if you sort of like, either draw like a box in the center and make sure the address is super clear or just like make a way for it easier for the machines to read, then I haven't really had an issue with that. And I'm in Canada, so, and I've heard lots of people who send stuff um, in like through USPS and have never had an issue and same with Canada Post. So just make sure your addresses are really like legible, <laughs> like really clear, and then you won't have a problem with it. So I've just did some, 
on one side and on the other side to kind of balance it out. And now I'm looking for my stickers. This is my absolute favorite stamp set. It's um, Versafine and Smoky Gray. And now I'm just grabbing um, some stamps from my collection of Robin Marie Smith stamps. I'm using, I end up using two from the Garden Muse set, I believe. It's kind of like scribbly one. And then that kind of, they're kind of like flowers, like seedlings. And so, and I, this, I have to use this weird size acrylic block because I can't for the life of me find my smaller size one. So I awkwardly stamped with my too big acrylic block. <laughs> instead and so I'm just I like I really like this smoky gray for this kind of thing because black sometimes is like so overpowering that if you stamp or even ghost with black then it kind of like takes over the paper but this smoky gray is perfect for adding stamped images and textures that kind of help that like blend into the background where you see them but they're not like the main focus whereas if you use black so now I'm using that second stamp from the garden muse set and this is like my favorite ranger archival ink in jet black and as you see, like you can see the difference between using that black versus that gray. And I, I like I wanted to do it this way, but if I had done all those scribbles in black, it just would have been super busy and like overwhelming and the scribbles would have like taken over. So if you're ever looking for a way to like add stamped images without sort of taking over your page, then I recommend grabbing like a gray ink. They work really good. And so now because I need a spot to put my address in the center, I just grab some like white masking tape and I'm gonna tape out that sort of center circle. Um, I originally was going to do three pieces, but apparently this masking tape I have is cheap and very transparent or translucent. As you can see, I put it down and I was like, well, I can't hardly even see it on there. So, which now like I could use it for other things. That would be cool. But for this purpose, I was like, oh, for crying out loud, I was going to use three pieces. Now I need like seven pieces or eight pieces to try and make this opaque enough that I can actually write on top of it. <laughs> and so this is like another way that I've done envelope art in the past is that, um, if you make all your art then kind of like use really th opaque thick masking tape like mask just to put it on top in the center then it kind of looks interesting and there's a nice clear spot for your writing to show up on top of and now I believe I just grab like a sharpie and write my address the address on here is like totally fake because I didn't want to reveal any of my friends or family's uh, mailing addresses to you guys so and I just decided to go with I mean I'm not a hand letterer you know I'm not, I never claim to be, so I'm just writing it in kind of like a funky Tory font on here. But like I said, as you can see, as long as like the rest of it's really busy, but I tried to make the center clear, like a nice somewhat opaque background and then make the writing really like stand out from the rest of it. If you were really concerned that it wasn't going to go through, you could like paint over a white spot in the center or put more masking tape to like make it the contrast better. And that's it guys, I'm totally done. So, so you can see using some of Robin Marie Smith stuff, I made like a really fun envelope art. So um, thanks so much for watching you guys. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe um, so that you get all the updates. Ring the bell so that you always know when I post. Um, catch me on Instagram at Fox and Hazel and on my blog, foxandhazel.com. Thanks so much guys, bye.